Rupert Murdoch announced he was retiring from the boards of Fox and News Corporation. His career spanned 70 years. Under him, Fox News dominated primetime in America, but some say it came at a cost. Critics say the formula to improve ratings eventually led to the country's most watched news program to regularly repeat falsehoods and propaganda on air. With Murdoch's ability to lure mass audiences, he was able to shape politics, not just in the U.S. or his native Australia, but also in the U.K. And we can cross to London and speak to our correspondent, Benedict Pavio. Hello to you, uh, Benedict. Tell us a little bit about what reaction has been like over there. Well, ever since the news broke uh, yesterday evening here in London, uh, it has indeed been uh, headline news and there's been a lot of talk about it. So looking at the papers this morning, it's not surprising uh, that you get certainly the Daily Telegraph, Murdoch, let's go, uh, of the News Corps reigns. Uh, then Murdoch takes up new roles, says the Times, uh, and reminds its readers that it is owned by uh, News Corps. Uh, the news that Murdoch is stepping down as uh, chair of media companies, Fox and News Corps, uh, handing control to his eldest son, Lachlan, so that's finally uh, official, um, also leads the Financial Times. They say, to quote them, the 92-year-old has, over the past seven decades, transformed an Adelaide newspaper he inherited from his father into a global media empire, which is, I'm still quoting, feared and courted by politicians across the English-speaking world, uh, and the FT calls it the end of an era. Now, the immediate reaction here in the UK, probably a very unsurprising one, um, is that Rupert Murdoch's succession drama has reached its finale, uh, and that four months after the actual finale of Succession, that famous acclaimed TV uh, news program um, is a show, I should say, is like, well, it's been inspired by real life family, and that is indeed the Murdochs, uh, as was confirmed recently at the Edinburgh Festival, uh, that he was very much inspired by the uh, Murdoch uh, family. So um, it says, with a formidable, audacious, ageing and ailing media tycoon, the big question now uh, is not no longer the actual succession wanted by Mr. Murdoch for the family business, uh, although we've had so much over the years ink spilt over those three adult children, uh, Elizabeth, Lachlan and James. Um, and really, it's a reminder of the frequent exposés. We have both investigative journalism here, uh, talking about the media mogul. Um, and now I think it won't completely end, uh, really, all this uh, question of his succession, because the speculation here is that possibly this is uh, not the end, that once um, Mr. Murdoch dies, that maybe there will be another battle of power amongst his other children. Yeah, and you, and you mentioned how Succession was based on on that uh, Murdoch family. Um, whenever a great show like that ends, there's always speculation about whether there's going to be a spin-off, and a spin-off in this case would mean what's next for British, American, Australian media. What have you heard in terms of the speculation about that? Yes, above and beyond a, a succession spin-off uh, that will be streamed, made, filmed, and <laughs> I'm sure that some people are already getting ready. There is, of course, you'll understand, uh, nerves, uh, certainly in certain newsrooms uh, of The Sun, The Times, The Sunday Times, uh, they will be wondering even more about what lays ahead. Of course, the Murdoch Empire has been mostly very good at adapting to this digital world, but uh, a lot of uncertainty. There will be also uh, people eyeing up uh, possibly the future breakup um, of that empire. Uh, but I think what is also important and crucial to underline is that it comes not just before any year, but before 2024. Uh, and what are we going to get in 2024? Well, we're going to get a UK general election and we're going to get a U.S. Uh, election as well. So uh, a lot to watch out for. And when you know how much Rupert Murdoch, who sometimes went in, it has to be said, the back door uh, of 10 Downing Street, so as not to be seen uh, and filmed, but we know the concrete uh, influence power uh, that he has wielded and how much, whether it's UK prime ministers, um, UK candidates to being prime ministers, uh, and also US presidents have courted him. So I think that will be very interesting to understand in his new role how much of that influence he brings to bear on future coverage, for example, here on next year's general election. All right, Benedict, thank you very much. Benedict Pavio reporting from London.